Shoot the Public Library podcast. I'm your host, Michael Rivera, and today we're discussing the new children and early learning spaces being implemented at libraries across the district. I'm joined today by Chandra Van Eindbergen, DPL's Youth Services Supervisor. Her department is responsible for many of our youth programs and worked very closely with Plus and Greater Than to develop the new interactive spaces across the district. Chandra, can you tell us a little bit about what your uh, department does here at the library? Yeah, so the community librarians that I directly supervise are um, responsible for outreach throughout the district for kids and families, birth through school age. Um, we also do a lot of the programs in the buildings, which is story time, book clubs, STEAM programs. They also do things like school visits and so much more. We also have other librarians, of course, that focus on different age groups and different specialties. But the librarians that I directly supervise are mostly focused on uh, the youth. Mm -hmm. With the library bond passed in 2020, every library across the district is getting new children's areas, new interactive spaces. What does that mean for the children's areas? Yeah, so this allowed us the opportunity to really reimagine our spaces, to take a look at what we wanted families and kids to experience when they were coming to the library. And it allowed us to look not just at kind of our previous play areas, but the entirety of the youth areas. So how can we really enhance the experience that families have and that no matter where they are in our district, that they are getting like the highest quality experience available it really allowed us to reach for the sky and try and imagine something possibly vastly different than what we had before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I've noticed mostly about these spaces is, you know, before they were kind of play areas and uh, now it feels like everything's a little more cohesive. Everything's a little bit more tied together, kind of with that mindset that we want to um, encourage people to learn and encourage children to develop the skills they need to get into reading, to get into learning, and to be more curious. Yes, very much so. There is always going to be an element of play to it, but the play is focused on learning, on developing early literacy skills, social emotional skills, and um, it really is much more focused on on developing those. Who did you partner with to design these new spaces? We partnered with a company from Portland, a design company called Plus and Greater Than, and they have been really wonderful to work with. It was a long process because we needed to discover why we wanted to create these spaces, the purpose of them, and the experiences we wanted people to have. So we started with many, many very long meetings with them where we did a lot of mental exercises trying to help us hone the experience and the feeling that we wanted people to encounter when they were in these spaces. Um, and they really helped us with that. They have worked with OMSI and a, a wide variety of, of other organizations. And so once we narrowed down the ideas that we wanted. Plus and Greater Than went back and they created a whole profile workbook of, of what they thought would work really well. And then of course, the, you have revisions. They bring that back and you say, oh yes, that's exactly what we were going for. Or I don't think that that is exactly what we want. And that again, took a long time. Um, then of course, there's the actual building of them, but the implementation is also not a fixed point in time. We are not done. We are continuing to evaluate what we have put out, what is working, what needs to be tweaked or reevaluated. And so it is a continuing ongoing relationship that we have with them. It's been really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the rollout started here with the Pine and now Sisters. Yes. Um, and so it's kind of the first time you guys get to get your hands on, you know, what these are going to behave like in the in the real world, how right. people are actually going to use them, right. um, which is exciting. And I think one of the most exciting things that, you know, it's not going to be really seen until more of uh, the new libraries come online or the remodel libraries come online is that these spaces aren't designed to be necessarily like 
living here in sister or living here in the pine or right. living in sisters they're kind of meant to move around so that the experience that you have at one library can can travel and uh over time your experience in the library can change so that every time you're coming into your home library it's not the exact same place every time it'll live there for a bit and then um once once it's had its had its run there yeah. then you get a new experience without having to drive all the way up to sisters to get that experience that you're having here in Redmond. Right, right. We really wanted to make sure that that there's a cohesion that runs through all the libraries. So there are things that are similar, but each library does also have its local flair. So it might be whether it's a color palette or um, something that's specific. But what we have created, the mobile carts and the uh, cart tops, are designed to be interchangeable. So they lock into these docks, but they're on wheels, which we don't necessarily tell people because um, we don't want them moving them around too much, but um, they are movable. And so the whole purpose of that is, as you said, to move them from location to location so that we don't have to remodel a space. We just need to take some of the elements from it and we swap them out with another library to keep it fresh and to keep changing that experience and that access to different types of things for each of our communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want people getting bored and you want to be able to make sure that um, people can stay curious. And if you're experiencing the same thing every time in the right. library, you might, you might, things might get a little stale. Yeah. And it's the same reason why we went to the floating collection, which is, you know, our books aren't assigned to a specific library. They when they're returned somewhere, they stay there for a while until they go on hold to somewhere else because we don't want a collection or an environment to get stale. We want it to be uh, constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that mindset, that mindset, you know, carries through to everything. Absolutely. You know, with the new spaces, if, if you really look closely, um, a lot of things are on wheels. They're not, they don't look like they're right. on wheels, but they're designed so that we can we can have a little bit of flexibility in user experience without having to do another big remodel. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really exciting to me. Me too. Um, so the children's areas, you touched on this earlier, but the children's areas are about play, but they're also designed to encourage curiosity and learning. Um, what types of goals do each of the spaces um, have built into them? Yeah, our um, our youth spaces are for a wide range. So we have items that are very specifically, very specifically designed for like a zero to five, but we also have ones that are designed for, for older and school age kids. So when we're talking about the zero to five, what we are trying to encourage are the early learning skills that we know are a really important foundation for learning how to read and write. And those are things like print recognition so that kids understand that print actually means something. Um, letter recognition. So we have one of our uh, cart is called wordplay and it's it has blocks in it for them to play with because shape recognition is the beginning of knowing letters because you can't know what a letter p is if you don't know what a circle is um and vocabulary the ability to tell a story in sequence and being able to make predictions so you might think to yourself well how is that involved in what you guys have created Part of the purpose of what we've done is created things where we are encouraging participation from both caregivers and kids or kids with other kids where they're talking about what they're doing. We know that if we ask a toddler to tell us a story, it doesn't necessarily go in sequential order. But if kids talk about what they're playing, if they're playing with one of our um, mobile carts that looks like the kitchen and their caregiver says, what are you making? And the child explains what they're making. That's learning language. That's learning vocabulary. That's learning that ability to tell a story in sequence um, and make predictions. Um, it's also pr what we call print motivation, which is simply the love and enjoyment of reading and literature. Um, when we talk about some of the older kids, it is in stimulating curiosity and exploration and our 
carts that we have for older kids are also about social emotional skill development. A lot of them are designed for kids to possibly work on them together. So learning how to cooperate with each other, learning how to talk to each other are all part of the social emotional development that we are really, really looking for. Um, and I think the last thing to, to mention that a lot of people don't necessarily think about with play is it's very important for kids to develop gross motor skills and fine motor skills in order to be ready to learn how to read and write because you can't write until you've got fine motor skills to be able to hold a pencil or a crayon and writing you know if you're if you can't support yourself by not leaning on a table it's harder to turn pages it's harder to learn how to write so fine and gross motor skills are actually really really important for the development of literacy well i think it's very exciting you know that literacy is so much more than just reading and it's it's how you learn and how you um develop throughout your entire life yeah. and and getting that right you know for a lot of these kids that are younger than school age so getting getting some of that you know foundational knowledge and experience uh, at such a young age is very very important um and now that we're we actually have some of these spaces that are that are being interacted with um what excites you most now that you're actually seeing people use the spaces that you've spent so long designing. Yeah, it's incredible to see something that was in your brain and then on paper and then to see it in reality and to see people interacting in them with them in the way that you wanted. So we are seeing children's imaginations running wild, which is also part of how we designed these. A lot of our pieces are prescriptive in in the play for example like the kitchen one obviously you would play kitchen with that but of a lot of our pieces are are less prescriptive and so it allows the child and caregiver to play with it in whatever way they want which is again stimulating that part of their brain that is the imagination it also means that each time they come the experience can be new and different and fresh and so it's it's just it's amazing to see kids actually interacting with them in the way that we wanted them to. One of the other things that we have noticed that is so joyful is kids of different ages working with the same thing. Our pieces may have been designed with a specific age in mind, but that doesn't mean that either older kids or younger kids can't use it. And so seeing like an older child working with a younger sibling or just a younger child that they've met here at the library, modeling behavior for them, talking to the other kids about what they're doing is really exciting because our other hope was that these spaces would also create intergenerational play, uh, which is also really important for development. Mm -hmm so exciting and so right behind us we have all of this play area yes. but what you can't see in front of us is there's still books in the space Absolutely. so how are the shelving spaces and the, and the layout of the shelving changing um, to kind of meet the same ethos that the play areas have yeah so we will always have books. We are a library. All of our things are designed towards, you know, increasing literacy. So of course we still have books. Um, recently we went to a new system called Wayfinder in the actual like categorization of the books, which makes it a little bit more like a bookstore. So it allows for more of a browsable way for people to find books. The books are also, you might go to a library previously and everything is very straight lines, you know, and that's the way it is. Our spaces and our bookshelves now have more fluidity to them, which allows space for some of our early learning items. And the other thing that we have done is that our play pieces, our early learning pieces are not put in just one area. We have deliberately spread them throughout the area. And actually, even in the collection, you may find some of these play areas in the collection because we're trying to encourage, again, that curiosity and exploration and moments of surprise and wonder throughout the entire area. So it's not just, that's the play area, go over there and play, but that the experience of um, exploration is actually throughout our entire area. Mm -hmm. Well, 
<clears throat> and you touched on the Wayfinder thing. Um, in episode two, I, I spoke with Emily O'Neill, our technical services supervisor. Um, and the children's space was actually the first area that was was kind of our testing bed for Wayfinder. It's, it's more of a bookstore type layout. And we saw great success with that, um, even without the, because we have new shelving design specifically right. for that new system. But even in downtown Bend, where that program was piloted, mm -hmm. Uh, we were using our standard shelving, but just by changing the layout and grouping books together by topic, similar to how they are in a bookstore, that collection saw something like a 20% uptick yes. in in um, in, uh, in checkout. So I think that's really exciting, and it's it's awesome that you know it's it was proven with the curiosity yes. of children, and now we have a space that kind of uh, can mesh really nicely with that, and hopefully encourage a lot more curiosity. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me. Um, I hope that this conversation helps inform our customers about the new spaces available to them. Um, and I'm really excited for customers to finally uh, start interacting with it. Me too. It. Very exciting. Thank you. Um, you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found. We upload to Spotify, uh, YouTube. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you on the next one.